Hey there, and welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your Brains Player 2. Two years before the events of September 11, 2001 catapulted terrorism to the front of the global conversation, one game designer named Min Gooseman Lee was curious about the nature of the terrorist and counter-terrorist relationship. Hint, it involves a lot of bullets. Lee built a mod for Half-Life that was so good, Valve hired him to keep developing it. The game was so popular, the challenge of releasing software patches for its huge audience encouraged Valve to create Steam, and the international reach of the game made it one of the first esports. The little mod that was ahead of its time was Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike Global Offensive is the latest in the line of competitive first-person shooters in the storied Counter-Strike series, and like its predecessors, it's a mainstay of competitive gaming. It even won Esports Game of the Year in 2015 from the Game Awards. The setup can't get much simpler. You can play as a counter-terrorist, or if you've always wanted to play as the Nazis in the old-school Call of Duty games, you can play as a terrorist, and your mission is to defeat the opposing team. Simple, right? Yeah, it is. But we wondered just how alike, or realistically unlike, reality this game could be. So put on your flak jackets and let's take a look at real world terrorism versus counter terrorism. Early first person shooters tended to deal with either events a generation or two removed from its primary players, like World War II, or events involving Mars based portals to hell. So, near future, I guess. Nowadays, we're more comfortable simulating events that have happened in our lifetime, and terror attacks make for dramatic gameplay. Terrorism itself is a bit of a confusing beast. With so many disparate groups and different goals, it's unlike any enemy we've ever waged war against. Even the definition is disputed, but it's largely agreed that terrorism involves violence against non-combatant targets with the intent of creating fear and pandemonium for political reasons. It straddles the line between domestic crime and an act of war, sort of like Duke Nukem Forever. Get it? Because it was so bad it, 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 was, it was a war crime? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see myself out. Counterterrorism has had to ramp up extensively in the post-9-11 world, which gives games like CSGO a ton of material to draw from. One of the most crucial elements of counterterrorism is urban defense. Terrorists target cities for what are probably pretty obvious reasons, high population density and lots of cultural significance. This allows game developers to create intricate arenas for crazy intense battles, but that fact probably doesn't help you sleep at night. Many liberal democracies around the world, including of course America, have responded to terrorist groups with military force, rather than domestic policy. America has a number of special forces groups like the Army's Delta Force or the Navy's SEAL Team 6 that train extensively for no-fail missions. When the enemy is rushing B and it's go time, these are the guys America calls on. But counterterrorism is a much bigger and more complex job than a 5-on-5 five -five fight to the death. Terrorists frequently hide among the populace, and there's no mini-map in the corner of the screen pointing out their targets in red. This is part of the controversy around using military force to combat terrorism. There's disparity between the number of civilians our government acknowledges it has inadvertently killed and how many other groups believe we've killed. For example, between 2009 and 2015, the White House has acknowledged 64 civilian deaths due solely to drone strikes. The Bureau of Investigative Journalism has that number at more than five times that. When civilians are inadvertently killed in counterterrorism efforts, it becomes essentially free advertising for terrorist groups. It's also why terrorists surround themselves with non-combatants. It makes them harder to find, and it makes them harder to kill without hurting innocent people, until they can hatch their plot and hurt innocent people. Terrorists are dicks like that. In games like CSGO, the terrorist team is mainly responsible for trying to kill the counterterrorists and to stop any hostages from getting rescued or their precious bomb from being defused. In real life, terrorists are far worse. They frequently use suicide attacks, which are obviously difficult to stop. Suicide attacks were responsible for 70% of the deaths due to terrorism from 1980 to 2001, though they only amounted to 3% of all terror attacks. If someone is willing to blow themselves up to further a cause, you're not likely to reach them through diplomatic means. So how do counterterrorism experts handle suicide terrorists? One method is through infiltration of terrorist organizations. Back in 2012, a wannabe suicide bomber was stopped because, as it turned out, his Al-Qaeda connection, the one helping him plan the attack, was actually an FBI agent. The bomb he had strapped to his chest, which he planned to detonate in the Capitol building in Washington, D.C., was inert. Intelligence is one of the most crucial aspects of counterterrorism. With enough information and subterfuge, government agencies can foil a plot before it even starts, avoiding the need for high-stakes shootouts. 
It makes logical sense, but maybe not a compelling game. Governments fighting terrorism have four key tactics they use. Attrition, direct action, civic action, and covert action. Attrition focuses on capturing or killing terrorists and strengthening buildings or other potential targets of bomb attacks. Direct action is the more guns blazing approach that gamers would be familiar with, but its focus is on killing key leaders in the terrorist organization, so like the boss fights of counterterrorism. Civic action is all about changing hearts and minds, both of people already in the terrorist organization and people that could potentially sympathize to them, the reach out and touch somebody tactic. Covert action takes the stealthy approach and is less about killing terrorists and more about disrupting their operations non-violently. So in our Washington DC example, counter-terrorist experts relied on covert action to take down the would-be bomber. While not as thrill a minute as a bomb defusal scenario, Protecting innocents through nonviolent means is a huge challenge in itself. Intercepting information is not as easy as it seems, since there are so many possible lines of communication terrorists can use in the digital age, and public encryption is getting better and more widely available. Sussing out potential terrorists from the background chatter is like finding a needle in a stack of needles, and keeping an ear to everyone's private conversations raises thorny ethical sticking points about privacy. When intelligence agencies do acquire useful intel, it's crucial that they share it. Agencies like the FBI, CIA, DHS, TSA, and tons of other acronyms all have to communicate effectively, and that's just within the USA. Since terrorists often work internationally, world governments have to cooperate to be effective too. Terrorist organizations are also often structured in cells, making them difficult to wipe out entirely. Cells are small groups of fighters who only have bits and pieces of information, like one cell might know the time of an attack and another knows the target. This makes extracting useful information more difficult. It's understandable that a game like CSGO would simplify the nature of the conflict between terrorists and counter-terrorists. After all, it's a multiplayer-focused competitive shooter, it's not a documentary. So I'm not trying to pull a Neil deGrasse Tyson and suck all the fun out of the game by explaining what it gets wrong. No disrespect, Neil, you are my hero. It's just that there's a bunch of fascinating layers beneath the surface that games barely scratch, and even if those layers themselves wouldn't make compelling games, they're still worth knowing. Hey, thanks for watching. Please give this video a like and be sure to subscribe for even more videos. Most people think guns and bombs when they think terrorists, but they can weaponize technology too. To see how vulnerable cities are to cyber attacks, check out our video on Watch Dogs 2 here. And don't forget to keep on playing.